I'm laying down and begging you. <laughs> Don't come to my office again. I will never do it. I'm not in politics. I don't want to deal with more in politics. He has read my, when I read my CV. It was me who used my money. No company, nobody ever paid for me to go to all these schools. But I Cambridge here, yeah, Oxford, Kellogg, and nobody paid for me. Really? Who decided that when I said, I'm not let me know why they're this thing they teach in this place. I can change me. So it means that using my money. That year I was going for a program in Kellogg Valley School. And in Kellogg, I was to spend three months on the advanced management course. That was the last, last year of the dean of the school, the longest dean of Kellogg Graduate School, Donald Jacob, started in 1957. His last year, he started in 57, became a professor of economics in 57. His last year, was 2001. And he took us on a course called the World Economy. And he went on and on. After three months, a day before the last day, being, being a professor from 57 to 2001, imagine the number of people that has taught all the CEOs, the day before the last day, Instead of teaching us, you know what it is? It was in the tone when everybody was there. And I raised my hand. I said, Tom, you've taken us to world economy, but you never said anything about Africa. He <laughs> said, Peter, I don't know about Africa. I said, yes, Tom. I paid 14,000. <laughs> <laughs> and you've spoken about every other place apart from my country. So I'll tell you tomorrow. The last day. On the last day, he came again, spoke very well. The whole place was. And he looked at me and said, Peter, do you want to know about the world economy? I said, yes. You want to know about Africa? I said, yes. He said, nobody plans in Africa. 2001. See, have I ever seen a car called Africa Spec? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Two thousand and one. He said, "There's no car called Africa Spec." You, when, when car manufacturers are dealing all the big car manufacturers, you see European Spec, Asian Spec, Gold Spec, American Spec, but there's nothing called. Africa Spence. That means nobody plans with Africa. I went on and on and asked him a question. Do you have in your country five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, what? No. Do you think I can answer no? <laughs> so I, answered, I said yes. <laughs> I don't I don't have this, I don't know it, but I can't answer it. I said yes. He said you would like to have it. <laughs> but he asked me to join it for lunch. And I joined Professor Donald Jacob for lunch. And after lunch, if you know Kevin very well. It's on the back of Lake Michigan. The school is here, the lake is behind. So you usually walk to find the beach of the lake. Some of my second, that's why I'm a Kellogg scholar, because I've got about four main courses in Kellogg. And you have to do three, four courses to become a Kellogg scholar. The special alumni group. So, so he said to me, let's take a walk from back of the country. As we're taking a walk, he asked me, do you have any of your country's coins? The biggest domination there is 100 naira. That was the biggest domination in 2001. There's no 500, there's no 1,000. 
So I brought my bread down. Do not check out God's house. Put my bread down. And he said, which of the two corners is being performed? Exchange day from one dollar to one dollar. So what do you think I'm saying? And I told him I prefer the dollar. And he asked me why I said the cause of the rate of this change. I told him, he said I should keep it dollar. You keep my hand. We took another walk, like a pool. And he stopped again and asked me, Peter, can I bring my mother and my brother back? Tell me, why do you prefer this currency to this one? And I told him the same story again, because of the little miss. And he said, let's sit down on the bench. I will say that. And he said to me, the only reason why you prefer another man's, another country's currency to your currency is because you don't have faith in your country. Not the economy of 50 something years. Economy is driven by faith. And what that is faith is hope. The government gives you. There's no one that has faith because there's no hope. It's not the rate. Chinese people keep their money in Chinese yuan. Singapore, Singapore, Malaysia, Malaysia. There's no euro there. Germans keep it in max. British in pounds. Americans in dollar. Italians in there. When they break up, they say, because you don't have faith in your country, you don't want to keep your money in my man's case. And that's what is driving the courage from holding your faith. We've been with you here for three months. Can I ask you for three months? Because the cost is more than that. If you know how to do <coughs> most of the senior major courses in business with the high end courses, it's more of a part that can I ask you for He first asked me, do you have this amount of money? Are you worth one million dollars, two thousand dollars? And I said, yes. Are you worth this amount? I said, yes. Are you worth this amount? He got to the safe. He said, Peter, you made enough money that you can afford to buy food that is well. I did the rest of your life. Maybe don't make me alone. You might not be flying in private jet and everybody can live the rest of your life. Can I ask you for a for that same Go back to your country and participate in building public wealth. Public wealth enriches everybody. Individual wealth impoverishes everybody. The problem in your country is that people are pushing individual wealth and everybody is poor. But if you put in public wealth, everybody will be rich. You should do If you can do it, you will find it fulfillment. That was the last. So the last Jacob was the last son just after being gone before he died. Because I had to go back and tell him the person for me. Well, when I got back, a series of things happened. I went to Orisha, where I live, so many years ago. But what was the most instructive is that schools, if you know how I state, somebody who was senior prefect of the even in 2001, in 2002, schools were shut down in Alhambra State. And nobody went to school for one day. And I said to myself, with, the, with that background of what was happening, we were going to do a major investment where there's about six of us. This is the investment everybody knows. Even people in Nigeria are going to look. So we're going to put in about five million dollars. And I go home and I said to my wife, I'm one of the best in China. I'm going back to my village to find the government. You can imagine the shock. 
My wife went to be the then chairman of Diamond Bank, chairman of the Continental Bank. This is a lot of people. I go to the area of the world. Please, you don't know where you come up with. You can never come from this other point. I didn't have a house in my village. So where are you going to live? What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to build a house. I'm going to build my mother and my brother on Fridays. That's how I packed my suitcase and went to my village. The rest is this. I stayed there for two years. Campaign. Until the election. The rest you know, I won. They declared somebody else. I went to court. Everybody said it's madness. <laughs> I stayed in court for another three years. I became the first one to ever be declared for court. Again, started because of what? I was going to do, not do, got impeached. You know, you know, I was removed from office to white. You know, came because of what you know. So why did I give you this background? It was all not easy. But I never put junction, which is what I tell people. Ask myself what next to do? What next do I need to do? Father, two kids, two of them are graduates, two of them are working, you know, doing well. I won't say that two of them are doing well. My son is definitely doing well. Exceptionally well. My, my daughter is a I would say the church. <laughs> Maybe her prayers is what is keeping me. <laughs> I have a daughter that prays far more than me. I believe in, in God far more than me. She <laughs> can see the Lord now with me. So what I'm saying is that I have 2,000 people who are happy with themselves. My life is happy and everything. And then something that surprised me. I agree something with Benga. This time I wanted to be quiet. I agree that with Benga that I'm going to come here. But I think with Benga that I'm going to come here. Today is my last day. And she said to me, somebody, somebody knew me. And she said to me, and she said to me, but Peter would plan things like this and we forgot and I said, yes, but we have to get a bit. You keep doing our work. When I come back, I'll say things to you. But this report, we're talking about Nigeria. The other one is Nina. Just go. You, that everybody, go and eat that dinner. That's, I'm going to eat the, the one we came with. Mm -hmm. but, so when I was coming, someone said, Peter, only you can do this. And he said, I said, I said, I said, I said we are talking about the collapsing place. I'm talking about Facebook. So he said, Peter, only you can send it. But well, what am I trying to say? Each time I see every reason to say, I want to get involved in this, people say to me, oh, Peter, be careful. This people will kill you. This people will do this. This people will do this. This people will do this. What else is there to live for? What else? If we cannot go around every single day, you feel a sense of pain. Yeah. What is happening here? Why should we be like this? You look at the enormity of the resources, human resources, that can change the world. Looking at you, 
clear the enormity of the face that can feed the world. And you ask yourself, why can't we change that? Just like I told people, when I came to Arab Brazil, we were not for 26, 27 years, where I can make I said, no, I won't take it. We either put in number five, or we shut down the schools. We didn't change anything, but it happened. But like I said, I'm going to make a, spe a speech when I conclude. I want us to feel free. Ask any question, criticize me wherever, but let us go with interactions and questions so that when we conclude, we will want to spend this day with you a useful night. Even Brian, even those who are not from the university, this is the university community, and I expect serious interactions. We did it I'm sure some of you must have watched what happened with me and the Columbia University. That's what I want to see. So I want us to say, people get up and say, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And we take it from there. So this is just my introduction to tell you who I am. Do not look at the brain guard there. introduction. This is my introduction. This is my journey of politics. I'm not a politician. What I'm going to do this time is telling you who, same experience. Don't stand. Be involved. Get involved. You have one thing to offer. You might not be a voter, but you know somebody who can vote. Do not look your country is a mess. If we get it wrong in 2003, forget it. That's where we are. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this long introduction. But I'm not ready to take questions. I know you said there were written questions, which... So the structure we have, we have, we have some questions in advance with the thing, and after that we have the written questions, which was follow after that. So my colleague, you can have a single call. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, we still we have a couple of two questions from those watching online. Online, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. No, no, let's leave online. I think we'll do one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chairman. I'm ready for you. Okay, so. That's the last thing that I'm saying is no argument why I should sit down. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's really nice to have you here. We're really, really grateful. You, you, know, you can only imagine what your calendar looks like. And um, for you to uh, find some time to squeeze in to come and talk to us is really easy. And when we now heard what today is, to you know, it's not just finding some little room. I think people can hear me. Oh, well. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. So finding some wiggle room with, uh, on a day like this that's so personal to you makes this meeting even more personal to us. Uh, so we're very grateful. Uh, as Linda said, my name is Stephen. I study terrorism, conflict, violence. Uh, in <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 We have uh, three questions on the theme. Um, the first question is this. Uh, we don't want to go down the sad lane of all the numbers, all the technical numbers, because the numbers just makes everybody sad. We know the debt gap that we have in our country right now. We are borrowing profusely, and we are still borrowing as the debt is rising. Um, the question is this. How do you intend to uh, engage this problem? What do you think can be done? What is the economic remediation strategy to this kind of situation? And what is the political angle? Because basic developments, uh, economic theory says that when you have things like this, the angle most of the time is to go from the angle of uh, a political angle and an economic angle. But if there's a strategy, how do you think this can be engaged? Boring. Boring. Yeah. How, how do we make the bleeding stop? How do we close the gap? 
because we've already bought, the deed is done. We already have, we're, we're in negative debt right now. Our foreign reserves are gone. Uh, how do we uh, manage what is happening? And how do we bring it back? Oh, you want me to pile on? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. The second question leads up from the first one. When we, when we finally have a strategy, if there's a strategy, and we want to implement this strategy, development theory also states that there will be resistance. How do we manage the resistance from sectors, people, forces, agencies that don't want it to stop? How do we deal with that kind of resistance? Because we're having a, a very complex orchestrated system of development regression, and it's, it's there, and there are people and there are forces that are actually managing this trajectory, the negative trajectory. If we're going to have a strategy to fix it, there will obviously be resistance. How do we handle this resistance? Number three, when we finally handle the resistance and we finally get it working, how do we make sure that this is actually sustainable? How do we make it, how do we sustain it across regimes? How do we make it in such a way that it's not a pendulum? Okay. That when somebody gets there, it's fixed and he leaves, and then we go back and we keep pressing Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y. How, how do we make it work? Those are the three questions. Every nation of the world borrows money. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. We are here in the UK. I don't know the hazard trick or the construction procedure. <laughs> but I can tell you, their debt to GDP will not be less than 70% of the GDP. And so is it everywhere in the West. Like I told you people in America, they are dead to G GDP in America is over 80%. 81. 81. <laughs> <laughs> so, America is the biggest economy, a 23 trillion, 24 trillion economy. Debt to GDP is 80%. The second biggest economy is China, about 60% debt to GDP. So everybody's going. The third biggest com country is Japan, 230% to GDP. 230% to GDP. I can go on and on. Even Norway, they have the highest amount of Sovereign wealth fund, their debt to GDP is about 50%. Everybody's worried. So there's nothing wrong with worried. What is wrong is what you use the money you borrow from. That's right. That's the problem. If you borrow for consumption, as a public person, if you borrow for investment, then you're worth it. Are people often cite Singapore? Singapore debt to GDP is about 120, 130%. But if you go and read the constitution of Singapore, it says all borrowed funds is for investment. If you look at Japan that is owning 230% of the GDP, everybody knew what they used the money for. When they had economic problem and they wanted to keep the economy going, that's when they borrowed the money. And today, Japan still holds the highest amount of U.S. treasury. What does it mean? She's owing, she's owing, she's owing, she's owing. But if I go to her and say, I want my money, she has a plan. Because she has invested the money, and she has some treasury with which she will pay. And I say, I want my money. It's not telling me, oh, you lost the fund. <laughs> <laughs>
And I'll give you simplest example I use every day. So that I don't bore you with too much example. And I'm not, I don't know this. I don't like people comparing Nigeria and first war. <laughs> because some people go, oh, in Britain. I live there for 10 years. You never see me comparing them with Nigeria. Oh, in America. You never see me comparing them with Nigeria. I want to compare, I always compare third world to third world. So since we are in third division, Let's not have a conversation. Let's not go to the Premier League. Let's compare Premier League. Let's not compare Chelsea with the Cambridge. Let's compare Cambridge United. Maybe red in red in FC. So what am I trying to say? If you go and compare Nigeria with say Bangladesh, Nigeria is two hundred. Come just two hundred. Bangladesh is one sixty five million. So similarity of huge population. I was in Bangladesh in 2010. In 2010, Nigerian GDP was 375 billion dollars at the capital. Was 2,250. Our debt was 10 percent to our GDP. About that, what they talked about, 30 billion or something billion. That was our debt, 2010. So we were better. Bangladesh GDP at that time was about 115 billion. They have their capital precisely seven hundred and forty seven dollars. Their debt was 45 billion. So they were going at something percent of their debt to GDP. We and Bangladesh were the same ratio in HDI in 2000. Similarly in 2010, today Bangladesh, Nigerian GDP, is about 400 billion. Our per capita is 1,980 to 1,000. So you lost about 12% of your per capita, which is the real measure of wealth. And your debt has increased from about 30, 35 billion to 100, over 100 billion dollars. Without impacting on anything. Bangladesh GDP has increased to 300 and something billion. About 330, 340 billion. So they tripled their GDP. Bangladesh per capita is now 2,000, about 2,050, 2,100. So they tripled their per capita. And their debt has increased to about 110. So their debt is now about 32% of their GDP. It has actually lowered because their GDP has grown. That is what. Investment of the debt does to you. So Bangladesh has become a country that grows. As of that 2010, our diaspora remittance was almost to West Bangladesh. Today, we actually about surpassed us. What do what, what? Just using diaspora remittance, yeah. what did they do? They educated them. The more money we put in education, the more they get out of the Because they have people that are to respond. So there's no way we want to be 
just want to understand. How do we stop it? Because why are we are now in the mess? We don't have one, so we must go. Mm -hmm. But this is time to say, what is that? Save it. Save it. We must not borrow And if you're hungry, let's buy one. When everybody will go now, we must invest in it. Yeah. That's the first thing. We must, we're no longer going to borrow to for consumption. Mm -hmm. Anything you like and do, how we eat, you don't want to know. What happens you don't want to know because this investment in borrowing must go into you now have to reverse the country from consumption to production. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a producing country. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. That is where we start. That is the first thing we need to do. When you have this type of mess, you stop. In this 2007, 17, I did about it, when we had a session. Somebody said we will spend our way out of recession. I said, you're wrong. Western world can say that. Mm -hmm. Not the third world country. What you do when you're in recession is what you do when you're in difficult. The first thing you do is you cut your expenses. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue to live the same style. Yeah. You've got to go home and tell your children and wife, no longer are we going to eat out. Sorry, 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 sorry. But I'm going to tell my dad, see how things are bad, things have to move from. <laughs> so, you now have to go home and tell my dad, my dad, you must cook up. Things have changed. No more eating in the restaurant. We can no longer do this. It happened to me as a governor. When I became governor, the office of the governor was spending about 30 something percent of our budget. And I said to them, no, it has to stop. Because we were spending, we were not giving the education, which was not parents, the money required. So I said, we have to change it. The office of the governor, by the time we did our planning, supported it with our budget and everything. The office of the governor could only really fill up less than five percent of the vote from that side. And everybody was shouting and saying, Come on, I can't cope. Come on, I cannot do this. Come on, I said, No, 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 I can't cope. Just watch what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shut everything down. I'm still shutting everything down. Everything. The whole place was. That was even the reason why I was a bitch, which I'm asking. Everybody was like, we can't, this cannot happen. This cannot, no, it's not possible. Why must this happen? Why must this happen? But today, I can tell you, I say this everywhere I've spoken. My head of service was one of the best human beings you can have. It's a wonderful lady, wonderful woman, and a senior sister, somebody who took me like, her own. She would always run into the office and say, my own, my own brother, please, people are not happy. Nobody's happy with you. Please, just, just, oh, this, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you won't understand. Mm -hmm. You won't understand. And I say, sister, I'm going to worry. Don't worry. He said, no, 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 but I don't like the fact that I go out of here. Everybody's calling me but me. Everybody has said, oh, one. And I'll pop the phone so I can show you something <laughs> which you read out. My head of service will eventually publish a book. You know? She will eventually publish a book. I, she wrote something. I said to her, you won't publish it in the museum. Don't that when I went to New York, her sister told me that he shared a publication with that. Uh, but he said that I said it's room put it in the newspaper. I said, yeah, because I didn't like uh, 
Whereas I will show you. So, what am I trying to say? I'll just show you. Just, you just read the caption, and even if you don't read the whole thing, people can see just the head of it. What the story is all about. So, today, I go around my brother, the same person who said to me yesterday, Oh no, I can't live with this. This is it, yeah. So he will mention publish it. Look at it. Let me show you her name. She says, Honorable Barrister, Nelly Fong, former head of service to the government of Anambra State, under Anambra oh State, Peter Ovin. 24 June 2022. No, this, this, 24 June is not even the But read the, the capital. Uh, Mr. Peter Ovin, stinginess as a development strategy. <laughs> <laughs> She used to shout and everything. And then, when I started settling the bills, paying old pensions, they were old, gratuity, everything, everybody was like, where did he get the money from? I said, it was the money he saved from all those things that were quarreling with. <laughs> My ex never went to Abuja with me. And they would say, hey. It's like I tell you, if I want to come to Cambridge today, I can tell you there may be 30, 40 people who wants to go with me. Yes, what are they going to do in Cambridge? It's not even the people who want to see. <laughs> so I invited to meet in Nambuja. 30 people who want to go with me. Nobody is going to be in Nambuja. They are not ready to be in Nambuja. They follow me, use public money, pay for them to do the construction. So I go back, I have 10 million for this in Abuja. Hmm. Because I went with people who was not invited for the meeting. So we had a lot of things. The governor of Hanan Pro State is from Abuja. I said, Why are you from Hanan Pro State? My family is just supporting for one big and And he was coming up with something to keep it every month. I said, Why are we going to have lots of money? I don't live there. If I go to Abuja, they give me 50,000 naira to cook. The proof of entrance is 5,000. He said, He cooks in case he can come back with you. Who does that? It's only what that cooks in case they can go and cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're down. That's the first thing you do when you have a problem. You shut down your expenses. Yeah. They have a big office called Office of the State. Yes. <laughs> nobody put there. Yeah. 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 And you ask people, Advice on the rest of the world. How to look good. 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 Have you ever seen coffee? If anyone tells you, I'm so close to my wife, you will not believe it. It's very close. It's the last person who was in my who came with me, Daniel, who came with me. I came with my wife. Actually, it's my wife that opened the door. It's my wife that left it and I said, buy it now. If I go, so. And then you say, She's going to have a person. She never complained. Nobody did this. No, nobody even knew her brother. Just like my wife happens here. She's just there. She will even tell you, I can't do this your business. Even if I go and come back now, I want to say, ah, Peter, I know you come back. Don't, this is my food I'm going to enjoy. Don't bring the chicken inside. Don't bring the chicken inside. Don't bring the chicken inside. 
I can do all these things, though, but you know women. She doesn't do, I do. She wants to enjoy the little things. She says, no, 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 no. Carry your duty, please. But what am I trying to say? This is where you start. You shave your weight. Yeah. You do things properly. <clears throat> That's what you do. You don't go and start living the same lifestyle on a borrowed money. That's it. British side prime minister goes to Nigeria. He comes in the British way. The German chancellor comes in the first Then you who is old. <laughs> <laughs> That kept us here. Yes. It is structure corruption, structure criminality, structure that, that is what I want to dismantle. Exactly. It must go because that's the structure that made us not to generate more than 4,000 megawatts in 20 years. So that structure must go. Yes, sure. So that's what I find here. Go to other countries. What's happening with me for eight years? I can't see, but I can tell you I know that one very well because I come to Abuja. Every big man has said, I said, Sir, what is it? Nobody is happy with me. <laughs> Who is back on my face? I never can see anybody. And I can tell you, you're not a comedian. I can tell everybody, you know, we're not going to be happy. No, no individual will be happy. Collectively, the country will be happy. But I'm not there to see them. So they said, I never promised anybody happy. Besides, my job is not to make people happy. <laughs> if the video or if the video flavor comes here, will you be talking to you like this? No. He's not coming to talk about GDP. He's coming for the <laughs> So you you are, you are coming there knowing it's a happy time. Yeah, happy. When I was in when I was in Cambridge, I was happy hour. Yeah. Uh, so when happy hour comes, yeah. it's no longer it's no longer a job. There might be people who job is so independent. So we have to divide no road. So I have lost of faith. Oh, you're not even going back without surface the deal. And I accept my business. I have enough confusion in this case. To add that one would be too much. And it's not affecting us. And I have a lot of, I have the greatest number of women working with people. And then I ask you, she was a woman, secretary, uh, my permanent secretary of office, a woman, head of service woman, commission of finance woman, education, local government. I can go on and on. All women know, I'm very serious among government. They're very, very serious. My chief of staff is one of the best <coughs> person you can walk on the surface of the earth. And she can't take anything. She doesn't care. Governor, you are wrong. You can't do it. Not as well as I'm learning as the chief. I will even argue with them. I say, you can't understand I'm the governor. <laughs> because I told them from day one, if you people agree with me in three meetings, I'll sack everybody. <laughs> I know that I'm working alone. I want to hear bad news always, not good news. Because I'm the leader. So your job is to always correct me. 
So Job used to always say to me, you're wrong. And they took it personal. And they were meant well for the state. And that's why we arrived at what we achieved. So we would drag them. They end up crying. They will not be happy. But we're going to cry. Because we need to change the things. How do you think that it's sustainable? It's the people. When the people tell you about building institutions, that's why I went to all the schools, like your school, yeah, to learn where there's any other thing. Institutions are built by people. Who removes the money? Just There's no law that said you went to party, you go. <laughs> I don't know. It's not between anyone. And I can tell you, if it was in Nigeria, <laughs> we can have more parties. It's the people that said no. Jeff Fletcher was a famous person. Famous person. Tory chairman. You know what it means to be a Tory chairman? Huge post. Like chairman of the APC. What do you what is the question? Which is dead, you The only thing I did that was wrong was that he said, I did not. I left it. The first who came out and said, of anything is the people. Peter have come to Cambridge today to preach to you, to talk to you, and we spend hours talking. Peter called President to call. He called back to Cambridge. And then Ghana called and said, ah, oh God, there's this street. If I show you where people buy new houses here, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, Justin has bought his own, Mike has bought his own, that's where this person lives. That's where nobody talks anything. So I go to buy my phone. Then I call him. What's the name? Pastor Sani. Of 
that when Peter started running this company in the wrong direction, to say, but God has no We had a harvest yesterday. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, I was in Geneva. There was a storm over the room. The pilot said, we were delayed for two hours. And we eventually took off. The pilot said, it's going to be down. So everybody knew. The pilot said, because of this, the flight is going to be delayed. So a flight that is supposed to take us an hour 30 minutes took over two hours 30 minutes. And it was. But I saw somebody who was in the plane with me and said, Why do you think we're not feeling we are gone here? It's all this. Why do you think we're not? We were sure that the man said there is a pilot. <laughs> it was we hire we the man there is qualified. What happens in Nigeria is that we hire somebody who is competent, who is not this, and suddenly it tells us. Oh, um, uh, when, when, now, when I, what I saw when I came in, I was listening to him, what did you see? So if you see something wrong, you should ask him, come on. Let someone who will see what we want to do, enter. The job of the leader is not to complain. It's to provide solutions. Not to complain. He's telling us that what? The last people did. If the last people were doing well, we hired you. Yeah. We hired you because this company was for us. That's why we lost it. That started as we went there. We went there. We lost it. If Benga was doing good, we hired you. That's the first thing. We'll be fast enough, so we can let. And then because Steve was my man for this terrorism business. I didn't have him. So don't go too far. We're so going to be in the trenches. So, <laughs> so go on. The next thing is. So, um, I, I, I saw. No, the drinking part. Oh, the drinking? Go on, go on, go on, okay, go on. Okay. Okay, uh, so the first auxiliary question is this. Um, the Nigerian education system is not where we all want it to be. And um, that one is a done deal. down from the, from the tertiary sector down to across the entire sector of, the education, of education. How do we handle this? Okay, simple. Next one. The written question. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, someone wants to know what you will do if you come into power in the first hundred days. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Somebody else wants to know what your strategy is for infrastructural development. For infrastructural development. This is under education as well. Somebody wants to know how Let me, let me I'll, I'll just take care of them. One, the program that I told you is not a program of 100 days. 100 days doesn't exist. Let nobody tell you that Peter B is going to tell you what he's going to do in 100 days. 100 days, you're still dealing with him. 100 days, you're still dealing, dealing with the principalities then. <laughs> But let me assure you that from day one I hit the ground running because I'm getting prepared for them. Yeah. If I want to 
take this because I won't want to go back to last time of question. When people said, what is your priority? Not priority for instruction. No. What is your priority if you come into office? <coughs> Number one is that you have to deal with the issue of security. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. People's security is affecting everything you want to do. Because honest is the first fundamental job for government to secure life and property. Because people have to sleep and wake up to be able to invest, to live in that society, to even attract investors. It's the only thing that drives away people today. One of the worst things that is affecting you as a nation is inflation and security at the heart of it because farmers can no longer go to farm and food has increased. And food inflation is one of the worst of inflation you can face. Now people pay use 100 percent, more than 100 percent of their income to feed in Nigeria. What do you need to do anything? So you need to deal with that very quickly, decisively. People can ask me why, how, and everything will be rest assured. It will be precise, decisive. That's no going back. You deal with that. Number two is to deal with the issue of lawlessness. You hear every day people tell you police brutality is that and that. that. Police behave the same way they put the same. It is a reflection. You cannot, people who work for you cannot be opposite of what you do. Rascality and bad behavior has become a measure of success. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote. So if I come here and people are being pushed, slapped, everything, then big man have come. You know, I have told you the story when I came. If you are saying, no. When I came, of course, it was me. I didn't even for the first time, they are not talking to me. I called him to apologize that I was going late, but I was doing nothing. I said, Mr. Wenger, please, I'm going to come late. I'm going to be there for 6 days. You said 6 o'clock. I said, Mr. Wenger, what is going to 6 o'clock? He said, no, you wrote 6 for 6 days. <laughs> I want to come by six. But it is better I wait for them and they will do it. And when I came, I, I met him and I told him that the sins we have done wrongly, we must start correcting them. If we say six, six. six. even one, we can change it to eight. But if we say six, and if you're not going to come by six, please let us know why you will not come by six. And I told him, I will let go of at M25. It doesn't cost you anything. And when I came, I told him, this is what happened. He said, no problem. I said, there's a problem. Because you have a time. <laughs> so that's what happened to me when I was coming up. Somebody invites me to a place, say, 12 noon prompts. They need to Come late. These are simple things that 
that makes the society. Yes. The intellectual asset that drives the society. Behavior. So, in my eight years of being governor, nobody ever pushed anybody. Who was the senior professor? Thank you. Did you come to government that Did you come to my office that all? <laughs> I did not know him. So, there's no need. I don't need to start pushing. What was it? They know what they were doing at them. I recall one of my protocol officers. I had a school visit to go. I visited every secondary school in the state. On the day I went to, I didn't see a big man was wearing the tongue white. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote it there. He would wear school visit to the president. This big man's marriage, come on, president. I said, let me ask. This man who was the first president, he has actually had to intend to talk about And that's what he wrote that is more important to me than education that I swore to improve, to go and support this man who, as far as I'm concerned, should not. Let me just keep it at that. Because that's where, hey, so I got, hey, everybody will be there. I said, is that when I'm elected to go with everybody? He <laughs> said, but our guy's school now, uh, commissioner is there. He said, what am I, when I go to school, like him, he had a written letter from me, he has seen me, has spoken to him, and everything. That motivation is far more important than go to where people. I did the same thing, say consumption, consumption. So, that is the only one for me. When I'm trying to process, what was your last question? Education. I've said about it. Yeah. Let me tell you about education, very simple. The more you invest in education, the better the development you occur. One of the things Nigeria is talking today is human capital. And again, that's what people say. What did the people be achieved in that I was number one in education. I was number one in health. I was number one in MDG. All the three things that makes the development, I was number one. <laughs> and so, my dear, you need to be a very structure. Let me tell you, when I went to Bangladesh in early 50s, when I went to China in the 90s, China places. Vietnam, these countries have no infrastructure. What did they do first? They invested in human infrastructure. You can't do physical infrastructure without building human infrastructure. Because this one will drive this one. So you don't go outside. So you come to Abuja, they build you 12 stories. No power. No lift. Everything is broken down. Because you don't have the right thing. If you have done the right thing by having the human infrastructure that will generate power, that will fix the lift, that will fix this thing. So whenever I go to Abuja, anytime they put me in a hotel, fifth sister, I say, no, what you have to do? I say, no, 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 no. Because the human infrastructure is broken down. So it's easier for me. <laughs> so that's where education is the most critical thing. What drives this place? Education. The intangible aspect, <coughs> which is security. Yes. Life. Law. Yeah. Rule of law. Yeah. You're sure that if you pay somebody for life, yeah. Yeah. you don't know the life. You go and sue somebody. You call police. If the man, man, the husband, and I slap him, slap her, she will call police. I know that police will come. Huh? If I do it in Nigeria, because I'm a big man, when he comes, so okay, okay, what, what is this bad man? I said, This woman, eh? Yeah? If I tell him, if I tell okay, what time I saw that woman, the way he did it. Yeah, the police, 
was invited. You know. I'm telling you, that woman. I said, my guy, you are too gentle for me. <laughs> and you're wondering, what happened? You don't even ask what happened. Right? Yeah? It's just saying. The person you pay for life, they say, ah, because I have money. Police is directing you for even buying them. <laughs> you become the business. Yeah. You know? You carry the last one. But why are you carrying the last one? Why are you carrying the last So, it's a crisis situation. Let's go. Neglected the roads, which is one of the issues we have in Nigeria. It's like a business. I don't know. Sorry, I didn't go there. Go on, go on. Okay, go on. 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 When you talk about roads, building roads will definitely help logistics. And investors will know that even if they have to run from kidnappers, which I know you try to deal with, the roads are good enough for them. So if you can address that. No, she didn't, she didn't know. No, one minute. Let me let me let me let me let me I want to award as the state with the best road in the country. Nobody has better road than me. Let me tell you what I didn't do. So you understand. We did a study. We decided to work with what we call the NDG. When I came, when I became governor, we didn't have Mr. Plan. No Mr. Plan. And I asked them, and I called people in charge of education. Yeah. Where is the education plan? What is our vision as a state? Where is the education plan? No. Where is our health plan? No. Where is the plan? So how do we work here? There was no one. So there and there, what, within one week I became governor, I decided to put in measure of planning. That's how we had Ministry of Planning. And took Obianos Deputy Governor, Kemo Keke, who was then the head of the Department of Economics. I took her, he was the first commissioner of planning ever in Brazil State. So come. And I decided, what would be our vision as a state? Because we didn't have any, we saw something that was very easy. Nigeria was a signatory to Millennium Development Goals, which if we had followed, yeah. would have been where China is. So we said, we don't need to go and start scratching our brain. Just like what I said today. If you want to change Nigeria today, yes, not, you don't need to kill yourself. Just do the simple things. You don't, you're not going to do anything new. You're not even inventing anything. You just do what other people are doing. So we borrowed that Millennium Development Goals yeah. and said, these eight goals are what we will pursue. This is our vision. So what is our strategy for delivery of this vision? That's what we developed and called Alhambra State Integrated Development Strategy. And it's everybody who was in Alhambra State yeah, knows it. It's something everybody knows. That at least became simple to me. It's a process that allows us to plan properly with the people. We move our planning from being <coughs> supply driven to demand driven. Because they're by the people. So plan with them. Budget to deliver the plan, execute the plan, and supervise it. If you reach MDG goals, the first goal is to fight extreme poverty. Yeah. 
So Anambra State, today you can go and check the record of statistics, Anambra, is the first state to do statistical reports on poverty in Nigeria. We want to know areas of the state that is poor and why they are poor. Number two is education. Number three is health. When we did the studies of poverty, we found out that the following state local governments are poor. A place called Ayamelu, a place called Anambra West, Obaru, Oka North, not Oka South. Yeah. <laughs> Oka North. Because yeah. our both family and co. When we studied all this, they have a common thing that is there. They were all farmers. But they were poor. But what were, what, why are they poor? They have no access. There was no road to them. Like Anambra West, there was no bridge. There was no access. By building road to them, that increased the value of the agricultural products. So what I did also, which is what China and everything, Hit the state. We don't need, we're not looking for anything. I live that they go on my room. My house is two bedroom place. My office is functional. And we needed a functional place. So if you go, we need a 43 kilometers of road in Ireland. And I'm proud West, where no single kilometer of road has passed. You go there, you see road. Start building road there. Start building our canon from to above, to above family. Where road has never gone before, first building to this and everything, and to every which where are you from? What kind of south? You, you, you. Uh, no, you are next to my town now, so. so you <laughs> <laughs> Because it worked. 
Okay, later. Get out of the Yeah. Get out of the Let me tell you. Get out of the We have the best security system that works. Let me tell you what it is. When you talk about sustenance, when I left us, the very somebody else is going to security. It's actually what we did. Because when we came back, you know, when you start implementing something, it comes here that yes. just like education. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, press the I started community police. Paying every community security directly for government. Bought every community vehicle. My sisters will never bought them for them. For those things that carried on, just like the schools. Yeah. My first tenor, for the first four years, if you go to the school in Nibuku, they have two vehicles. I bought the first, first four years, I bought them one vehicle. Second four years, I bought them another one. But why the nation who can be my tire eight years? Those vehicles were still there. <laughs> so it's easy to say I'm doing this. But gradually the people understood who did it. So now I can go back I live in Montana. I don't even know the only place that had a house in the entire Nigeria No other place. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think If you wrote it, uh, you can say it, no, isn't it? Your point? So, it's a plan of the cross. 
But you also go and look at the society that cares for the poor. Because we can carry everybody around. So, for me, those of us who have opportunity, my wife won, I can say, the facility in the coin, and I always tell her, if those in the coin can, if those in the table cannot eat, those in the coin cannot sleep. Yeah. So you need to bring food yeah. on the table for those in the table. Why don't the coin can have their food? These are things you must plan. So you don't say, okay. What I worried about the country. You want to do the better I am not going to be what I am if I come here and deliver to you. Will they make me share one of them? No, I have no job here. So I want to remain there and make it work. So it's the way we. So I'm not going to say to you, well, everything will be free. What you make everything free? Today, we are making it everything free. People are in the UK, some of you. Those of you who are not students here left Nigeria because why? The education. Huh? No, you want to you want to develop, develop them, yeah. sell the yeah. You want to develop them. You don't pass your college. Thank you. But let me tell you. Most help prompt electricity is no 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 let me tell you, your situation is worse. <laughs> Why is it worse? You are here in the Western world working hard. So what are you doing? All the things you have earned, you are using to provide that social safety net there. You are working for them. You are the one feeding them. You are their nurse. You are their doctor. When they get sick, they call you. You are their funeral director. When they care of them. Yeah? Everything. So, what you need to do is to help them to change that. So that what would they need me to work with them for? If you change it and get it right, you know what they will come. No, they become the work, they continue to become the investors. That money earned here, what you invest, they become productive, you make more money, they give more money. Nigeria. What I'm going to do about pipe bomb water in Nigeria. We need those things. Okay, sir. Follow so, uh, you what is happening in Nigeria today. Yeah. Um, my question one goes to this. Only one. <laughs> one for the youth, one for the age people. Yes. Um, I want to know the ratio. If you are given opportunity to serve, um, give us the percentage. You know. Um, you have, you have to uh, employ the class of uh, yeah, um, cabinets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let, 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 let me answer this question. Uh, no, no, let me answer this question. Let me tell you. Hmm? One minute. Uh, the age and the youth. My, my politics is not about. Let me tell you what it means. The politics I'm doing is not politics of sharing. I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use any ratio to do a Appointment will be based on competence, capacity. Exactly. If if you merit it. I'm not going to be, that's it. that is what we are suffering today. Yeah. So, that's what you're bringing. Yeah. It's not going to happen again. We're going to have, yes, I'm fighting today for.
for the young people. My government will be to take my government and give it to the young people. It will be young people driven, but it will be based on competency, not based on any benefit. The benefit will not come to me. I've been governor for eight years. And it's on record, and I want to assist you, but I'm what I'm saying here. I'm the first government to leave money when I was in office. And I said, I'm going to leave money. From the one, if you go and read Dr. Ibala's book, fighting corruption is dangerous. Go and read page 61. He said, every governor, when he wanted to save money, every governor said no. He wrote it there. Governor Peter, who insisted on saving, was not supported by his colleagues. He's there. And I went and saved. And since I left office, I don't have to say, not bought me a bottle of water. Every other one that left is special. So I'm not in politics of sharing anything. My politics is. Sir, how do you intend, how do you intend to protect our goods? No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So we're not going to share anything. Let me ask you a question, Tom. Do you think there's anything difficult in providing power? No. Absolutely not. There's nothing <coughs> difficult. However, it seems as if even during the colonial times that the provision of no, let me basic water no. and electricity no. No. was let me explain it to you. Prof, today, Nigeria cannot generate and distribute more than 4,000 megawatts of electricity. That is very sad. Very sad. Yes. The first time Nigeria as a government borrowed money was in 1953. Yeah. Went to World Bank to borrow money. Do you know what they used the money to do? Yeah. Do borrowed eighty-two million dollars to build 760 megawatts of electricity for Kaiju And he wrote in that letter of the World Bank that he's going to build this facility to support economic growth. Go and read the letter of the World Bank there. Kaiju Dam is still there. If you transfer that money to today's money, it's worth about a billion dollars. And we're owing about 100 to 120 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So if we are done, just take it 20 billion and give 20 yeah, and that, we would have had 20,000 million dollars. What does really happen? No, 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 I'm just saying. So what am I saying? There's nothing new. The fastest deployment of power ever done in the recent years was done. Egypt, 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 These three countries have doubled their power in the past five years. So the none of them is Western world. People that you can answer. The third world, I was in Egypt. Somebody in Egypt. Because Egypt saw what power could do. And the first goal is to we are the biggest country in Africa. We are 200 million. We generate 4,000. The second biggest country in Africa is in terms of the current in South Africa. 60 million. They generate about 50,000. And this is uh, about a month ago, the president of South Africa declared emergency in power of the Declare you want to Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Declare power. Declare emergency in power. And not to write that any individual or company can generate 100 megawatts without life. Somebody who is generating 50,000. 
for 60 million people. You dig so well. What did I tell my dear friend there? What did I tell her when I came? I was, no, I was just using. You, you know what I told her when I found them? Eh? When she asked the question. We're not asking you to provide everything. We don't want looking for government who provide everything. We don't want anybody to act as if it's gone. The problem in Nigeria is that we're here. And my friend, Stephen Amara, Stephen, come. I said, hey, there's no way we can be here. What is happening? These people have killed us. So I asked Stephen. Stephen now is our president. He still doesn't study terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> and we now we are, we are about one of the ten, within the ten countries that have terrorist problems. No, no, let me just make the top ten. I'm on the bottom. So that's how we hire Stephen. Stephen calls me here. We now move to this place. The terrorists have actually taken over completely. I still in this sense telling us that what he saw when he came here. We are not asking Stephen to stop everything, but please move on from here to here. We are not asking you. We are not asking you to get to this because. This is where you promised us you're going. But instead of being here and you're telling us how difficult it is, we're here. And you're telling us what you saw here. <laughs> and you still want to stay. <laughs> you know, when you have not offered us, there's a promise you made. Most government ever have achieved everything. What we want to see is 100% effort. 100% yes. result. Yes. 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 Every day, tell us the greed is the foreigner. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's it. We don't want to be that. That is the problem. So you can say, I don't want to tackle between me and you. I just have to tell you. My priority will be power against water. So we know that you provided power. So go. <laughs> Let somebody else come and provide it. No, 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 let's just do what? So I said, we we'll think good for you, this one. But exactly. where you say, when, when they ask you, say, security, we can solve water. Corruption, the economy. None of them is achieved. No, everything became mess. Kaput. And then you're not telling us that the man who was there before we hired him comes to trouble. Go back to your question. Quick, quick. Steve, please, let's yeah. you guys run it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the fantastic answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, how do we make the government accountable and transparent? How Simple. do you? If you win and become the president of Nigeria, you make all these fantastic changes. How do we ensure that they will be sustained and carried on? Yes, yes, yes. So how do we make the so if you say 
I give somebody money to go and build road. How do you make sure that they build that road? So, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm listening to you and really um, your participation in politics and the clarity of your purpose really got me interested in getting involved. I've had you talk a lot about what your mission is. That is to move Nigeria from a consumption economy to a productive one. So my question is, what's your view on climate change? And what kind of energy system uh, do you think you will use to deliver this uh, aspiration? <laughs> Let me, let me answer what I'm going to be very thoughtful. Eh? When I was asked this uh, question, this is a question that came up virtually everywhere I went in America. And I'm going to be frank to you. While I believe in whatever they say about climate change, to quote, I won't bother with it. You're, I'm being honest with you. But I'm bothered by the fact that Julius will put food on food. Nice one, nice one, nice one. I'm being honest with you. I'm not saying damage is not important. But, but, eh? I want people to understand though. We're going to be involved with it. We're going to pursue it. But we're going to put food in our table. So we start telling people, the people. Uh, there was, I, I used to tell people, there was an entire man who are going to be a president of a country, not a general. I want to see by 3 a.m. I came into that country, I was sad. And he said to me, oh no, I'm so busy if you can see by 3 a.m. They come for him. Hey, if you see like in our place, something like a bandit lamb and shoot by that tree. So I said to him, is it not too late to eat his food? I said, no, too late. Because he's going to eat that one. He was that first finished work and he was going to eat it. So when he said, he turned to me and said, Young man, young man, you are right. That is if you had eaten before. Specialist doctor, specialist doctor. Let's have rural medical centers. Where nurses, where a woman who is sick or there can be actually delivered from, can deliver from, it only two little things. What happens in Nigeria is that the man comes, here he says, and the governor, I want to build flyover. We don't have need for flyover. Let's see the basic road with that. <laughs> so people can pass in it. The flyovers are for where there's already road. And there's congestion. So don't go and start building fry over. Oh, we're going to build you a, a, a marble house for the office of the governor. For what now? <laughs> you know, basic things first. So that's what it is. Consider the dominant position for renewable. He talked about what he talked about. No, we will. We will. No, we will. 
Oh. You talk about credibility. Oh. All you say to us about you are talking about issue of corruption. Corruption, private corruption is I said to you, I would say no. You don't know what I'm about. The easiest thing to fight today for me is corruption. Yes. He is the governor. You are the commissioner. He is the permanent secretary. These are the directors. Eh? Thank you. The only one reason they will steal money is that you are stealing. Yes. If the government is not stealing, The, gun, the wife and children are not stealing. Those around him are not stealing. He may receive by 70%. I've spoken in the past eight years. It's even more than secretary now. Go and show me where an ambassador state more in this council campaign. I have to steal things. It will just take you all now. Because when I add my own, he add his own, add his own, everybody add their own. When he comes back to you, that you won't say no. Because your own is already included. But if your own is not there, eh, everybody will be scared. Do you know why my head of something wrote this and I showed it by the engineer? Because when they are bringing fire to me, everybody is scared. I think you will know the price of everything. Because when you come and show me, we are going to buy A, B, C, D. You know what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to show that sell it. And how much they sell it. So if you do it, the rest of the people will follow suit. But when she's my wife, and uh, she now has office of Facebook, he is the contract. He has approached me. He said, no, 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 no. Don't do like that. Somebody takes her to the Who now knows? She did not say, oh, Madam, did you see work? We are going to get this. Madam, remember that this is border. Needs to start business. And this is not cool. And then he has a good house, but this is father. Need to, if I present what you will make, he carries the good pressure. Office of Fairness and Tower Corner. What is the man doing? Make sure if, if I pass this, me, yeah. goes to the commissioner and say, Commissioner, let, let's show that we can sign this thing. Then when I come back home, she's telling me, Why can't you just sign this thing? Contact or see before. <laughs> is this the only person? Yeah, I said, Listen, the man has inflated it, he's the only person. Other people, he's not nice telling you, John did it. Come on, who okay, did it? Why is your own different? He's the only person in this world. This is, Then you are soft. <laughs> soft whatever you dream. Become a facilitator. In the evening, you come and call you, Daddy, this person wants to see you. <laughs> Even though you don't want to see you. So you must remove all the from the system to make it work. Accountability is what I just said. We must have promises that are. Visible, yeah. measurable, so everybody knows that we have said we are this man, this little driver of hire. We are in this vehicle. This is our destination. He can reduce the speed though. He can tell us that police have camera. But we are going to that direction. Not that suddenly, suddenly he says to us. Hey, hey, right there. You find out that there's a the roadblock here. So it's doing here. I'm <laughs> telling and he tells us story that since the end time, there's no forward gear. And we are keeping quiet. I'm a punishment for For everybody that is going Going back, going back. No, 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 let me, let me tell you, let me tell you what I said to you, let me tell you what I said to you.
If you want to serve, look forward. Yes, thank you. I one more question. One more question. From the question of restructuring. Okay, go on. I'm going to touch on it. Okay, instruction. The police. Okay, I have a question. So my question is this, you mentioned some of the things that you wanted to do. And um, I, remember, I recall when you were speaking, you said you did not go into And I knew that it was going to be So I just wanted to hear from you, what do you think might be the short term thing of some of the things that you just are doing? Most of the time, you just want to come in. And in particular, for the people that are less educated, um, and less aware that change will come in, so how do you carry them along? Okay. And also in the context of the decision that we have in Nigeria, you know, driven by ethnic mm -hmm. tribal differences, how are you going to okay. do that? First of all, you want to go look at me in the I don't know what to do with you. Okay, ask the question. Okay. First, that is the very, very last one. Okay. 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 How would you have How would you have And you said something, you said the people is a catalyst for change. Yeah. Do you think our people, not us, the Nigerians, the local, are ready for that sort of change? I'll start for you. I want us to end. Please, I beg anybody who has a question, please keep it left of the very, very, very important, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Um, this, um, there's something we don't understand. Uh, we are changing politics. They talked about fixed politics. We are already fixing politics by moving around and speaking to people. It's yes. never happened yes. in Nigeria yes. that we have a president. So, what you're doing is you are communicating to the people that they understand that you are there for them. They can see and hear from you, not talking from front. But the problem, my is this. All this lofty idea must be implemented. And to implement that, it has to, we have to win the elections. And winning the elections is also getting the people to vote, voting and protecting your vote, yes, and so Now, we have a problem. We have, very, very, politicians have used some of our brothers and sisters in the north for so long that they have weaponized, everything is weaponized in Nigeria. Poverty, ignorance, everything is weaponized. And these things are being done deliberately to continue to exploit these people. Now in the North, we need to do something to be able to raise the consciousness let, let me, and awareness let, of our people in the North to let, help us in this journey let, 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 so that together, we can win this election and get you in Asheron to do these things for the greater good of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Very good comments. Very good comments. Excellent comment. That is what I'm doing already. That's what I want you to have to do. When I conclude, you will see it very well. Yeah? You asked. What was the question again? Asorok. Let me ask you. Let me tell you. There's no problem in Asorok. Anybody who tells you there's a problem, when I started, I was told the same story. Private sector and public sector is not the same thing. 
even by the lady who wrote this narrative, they said it's not the same thing, but I ended up making it the same thing. You just have to be determined and focus on what you want to do. Would the people change? Yes. I didn't change the teachers. It was teachers who were teaching when we were 26. They were teaching when we were number one. Exactly. You were in school, senior prefect. Did I come to your school and remove the teachers? No. But let me tell you the difference. <coughs> when they saw that I was coming by 7.30, everybody was there. Nice one, nice one. Yes. That's it. Did you find it something for us? I want to ask something. It's a simple. <laughs> 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 so that is that. You can change the people. What was your question? Short term pay. Short term pay. Let me tell you how you do it. That was why I was in speech. When the pay started, I was in speech. My first impeachment. But after that impeachment, the people took over. People took over. Because why, why was I preached? Three reasons. Yeah. Item number one, two, three. Just three items. I had an office. I was born where my previous predecessor was there. I had issue with people. Like they bought put the governor's office and governor's money. So when I started, there was a project of 298 million to repair the office of the government. That was item number one. There was a, item number two was there was a 486 million budget to repair the house of the governor to rebuild it and refurbish it. And there was, and the, you are not allowed to save. So this is the third thing I want to teach. Number one was 298 million. I spent for the 3 million, 200 to do everything. Because we didn't have money. I'm not shut down the office of the governor's budget. So I needed to use the money in an efficient manner to deal with it. But the job had been given to somebody, so I took it for the person and I did it. Second one was the Forbish where I would leave four hundred and six million and I did everything with eighty one million. With what? Eighty one million. Eighty one million. They were busy. they were going to buy sophisticated beds, sophisticated <laughs> chairs, little <laughs> chairs from Dubai, from whatever they have I said, listen, I live in Norka. There must be somebody who can do beds. <laughs> <laughs> You have reason not to sleep, no matter the type of bed. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a reason to sleep, yeah. you will sleep on the chair. So, so number three. Number three yeah. was because I was saving money. How? There's no I didn't the house said it didn't have to for me to save money. But I said it from day one. We can't consume every income we get. Because it's wrong. This oil money we are sharing also belongs to the generation. So every country of the world that has a diminishing assets like us has savings. Except us. Only motor part. They share everything. <laughs> because no one trusts. No. <laughs> so that's it. Somebody mentioned about the structure. Let me tell you. A good. There's need to. The structure. Most part. Over existence for every two years. But remember, you can't do it overnight. It has to be worked on. There are things you can do overnight. There are things still in the Azar X. Simon asked the question. Civil acts, security, safe police. Tell me why we can't have safe police. With this security, then we're going to have community policing 
to be able to secure ourselves, let go. We need security like yesterday. Whatever it will take, let's do it. Why would we deal with this? Why would we stay with the education? The thing that are basic that we can buy like this. So the structure is you can't become present. And whenever people talk about resources, they say that is their problem today. The structure is not why they are stealing money. No. What has that got to do with people taking public money? Just the way we're structured. So by the structure, I was thinking of uh, a leadership or a system where uh, the different parts of the country, people are empowered to be the best or do what they want. No, the no, 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 that's the thing. That has to do with the issue of being a good leader. You bring good people on the table. Mm -hmm. You bring everybody to be part of it. It's like people asking about agitation. How are you going to deal with agitation and everything? And my question is, people have right to do anything. You negotiate, you consult, you discuss, you dialogue. There's agitation everywhere. There's agitation in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that is my wife. Anybody who tells you that, maybe their own is different. Mm -hmm. I've told my children, I've told everybody, whatever they say, oh, I said to them, you're going to get married. Oh, they're not the two of like uh, boss with the brokers. This is your bed, the covered thing. We don't always agree. This one, the terrorist. But we discuss, we dialogue, and we agree. And that's how we can make it The pilot was told us that it would be bad weather. Mm -hmm. And when we were jumping up and down, he was telling us to tell you when we landed, because it took us time to land. When we land, we have no parking space. He told us. When we eventually got to the gate, he did not allocate us somebody mm -hmm. to come and bring the staircase. Mm -hmm. The pilot said, I told you we were not. Pass to it today. <laughs> and I'm going to say that now. So it's communication. The other one in Nigeria, they will keep quiet. I think it's backing up and down. And everybody, nobody knows that we are dying. Nobody knows we are alive. So people will now resort, oh my God, Jesus, take control. <laughs> <laughs> so, because the market is not telling us whether we are surviving or not. So we're not. But if the panel says to us, it's going to be a bad weather, I know how you people feel, don't worry, everything is under control, you're fine, we'll soon pass it, then we'll stop. We'll stop calling Jesus. Who's already attending to too many problems? I'm not the only one of Nigeria. So it's communication. When other people have to conclude, when I'm going to end so that I can run back to London, Somebody said something that they didn't care. Yeah. And I want everybody who is taking cover to listen to me now. Just hello, hello, hello. As we conclude, let me tell you before. There's something this man said that is unique. Ordinarily, people would say to me, Peter, tell me why you spend your time to go to Cambridge spend your energy, spend your money to talk to maybe 30, 40 Nigerians. This is the story. You won't believe it. Other people would say, why are you doing what you're doing? Some say, is it, is it, this is over C people, like I told you before, what is their contribution? Do they know what is happening in Nigeria? My story is very simple. 
Praise be Jesus. No spirit. When that, no. there's 18 people contesting to be president of Nigeria. Okay. 18 of us. I'm not asking you this night to endorse me. I'm asking you to ensure that 18 of them come here, not to the process. To stand up like I'm standing for the past three hours and talk to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember what I said? Mm -hmm. Not through prods. Mm -hmm. Because soon, Stephen will bring one who says he wants someone to come and represent him. <laughs> and he had an emergency <laughs> and he couldn't make it. And Stephen says, okay, okay, okay. Let the CEO tell us what he's telling us. No, 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 wait a minute. Soon. No, no, I'm just telling you. No, no, I'm just telling you. Soon we're going to have one. I won't be part of that. Who is going to give her money? I said, share it behind us and tell them that if we do this, soon we're going to have people who are. I'm a Yoruba man. Yoruba must follow me. I'm an Igbo man. Igbo people will follow me. Or we do not have cannot. Emiloko. Question today is what are power? Has it benefited? Like you said, it's not safer than South. No, no. Do they have untouched? Electricity is not. No. My deputy governor, my vice presidential candidate, the wonderful man. You can go. That's it. 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 That's Can you go to Kaduna by it. That's Can you go there by train? Can you go there by air? Is it because an evil man is in power? <laughs> Same thing in the south. Is there any place the south is not vibrating cheaper? No. Is there any place the south is not? All these things you hear about ethnicity, religion, also bias, is it ended and conspiracy of the enemy mm -hmm. to keep the prophet where they are? And control the state capture of resource of the power and resources. So this is the three election we will not get. Our country end is a sort of a boring. Our total ending in the first four months of this year. First four months, January 1 to 30th of April was one trillion six hundred and thirty billion. Our expenditure within that period was four trillion seven hundred and twenty billion. No business can survive on that. And it has nothing to do with tribe. It has to do with human beings that are running this operation. So 2023 election, like I'm pleading with all of you, there might be one or two other than the action. There might be two one or two euro bands. There might be one or two people there. Yeah. It's my dear people. Do not vote for Peter Moon because he's an evil man. I'm not running because I'm an evil man. I'm not running, I don't want people to vote for me because I'm from the Southeast. Don't vote for me because I'm a Christian. No. Kazakhstan. He did it in death. Yeah. He donated the land, built the church. And he comes there to celebrate with them two to one in a year or so during Christmas and Easter. It's what we say schools has to stop. We want a country that works like every other country. We don't want, so I don't want any condition. Don't vote for me because it's my thought. 